Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I thought I would do one of these videos just sitting down in front of the camera. It kind of changes things up because I do a lot of voiceovers lately, and people like different stuff. And people have kind of like some of these uh, when I've done some stuff just sitting down in front of the camera. And then I can just give you guys this stuff raw. It's obviously not scripted. You can see I'm not reading from a script. I'm just looking at my camera, drinking, giving my thoughts. You know, and then this is, this is a topic that I've brought up. It's come up in my podcast. I've had a lot of viewers discuss it with me. I've had a lot of followers send me DMs and have some conversations. There's regular followers who, who I chat with just in private messages who are long-term followers. And you know, and it's this idea with influencers doing goofball show off lifts and silly range of motion and wrapping up and here's here's the issue with it um people say well it's just gym lifts like but when it's influencers doing it with big followings it's not just gym lifts they're marketing they're showing off what they are doing for purposes of generating an audience they make money off that audience and so you know when you look at that i think it's important for those of us in the fitness community to say look Put some standards in place for what you're doing. Quit doing nonsense to make it look like you're stronger than you really are because that's that's just not good marketing. And we need to understand the difference and, and, and understand that, ask the question of, are we doing an exercise for building muscle or are we doing it for the purpose of displaying our strength? Because we, most of us, even strength athletes like me, we do both. We spend a lot of time building muscle and I'm spending more time doing that. I've made it very clear uh, that even though my goals are primary strength, I am actually gonna work more on physique. I am getting leaner. I'm probably the leanest I've ever been on YouTube and I've just started a cut. Uh, it's the first one of the year. I'm doing a lot of extra hypertrophy work, working a lot more arms, things like that because uh, I understand it's valuable for my outreach and for what I do, right? There, and there's nothing wrong with that. The strength will always be first, but we need to differentiate that. Are we training a movement or are we training a, a muscle? Are we displaying strength? And so here's the issue. If you are making a display of strength instead of working a muscle, then it needs to be something standardized. So when you see people doing goofball stuff where they're gonna put on sleeves and wraps and all sorts of stuff to demonstrate a max or a three rep max or a five rep max. Well, if we're over here doing five or eight rep maxes, we're, we should be doing that to build muscle anyways. Why are you doing that on camera? Especially if it's a muscle building exercise. And I think that that is relevant. It's not a contested lift because displays of strength should generally be a lift that real lifters know how to compare you to other people because that's what a display of strength is. This is how I stack up. That means there needs to be standards in place, not just can I fling a bunch of weight around like a goofball. Okay, and, and I think that's the point uh, that I wanna make there. And I don't like seeing that on social media all the time you know, of, of guys just flopping around with terrible form, half repping stuff, is big influencers, okay? Because you're not doing something comparable in a, in a standard to other people. You know, whether it's an odd lift or, or a contested lift. On a bench press, for example, you I see influencers doing this and it'll be a respectable weight, but you look at it and go, but your max is probably 400. And don't get me wrong, a 400 bench is, is nothing to scoff at by any means. I am never going to scoff at somebody with 400 bench. I'm not benching 400 right now. See what I mean? So it's like, hey man, more power to you, but why do you need to cheat 500? You know what I mean? You'll watch them bounce it off their, their stomach, ass comes off the bench, elbow sleeves, all sorts of stuff. But they're a 400 bencher. I'm not going to name any names, but I've seen someone like that who's like 4'10 in competition. is his best ever lift, documented real lift. Does 500 like that on the camera. And it's a name people would know if I said it. That's nonsense. Um, but, you know, when you see other influencers doing it and they put up some weight and they're using all sorts of, of 
things, equipment that wouldn't be allowed in a competition to then compare their strength to other people. That's not comparable when you're wearing lifting aids that will help you. Okay, even people have to understand that. Using elbow sleeves, the bar is not locking, you know, up and down to the bar so you're shifting under weights. That is, in competitions like powerlifting meets and stuff, that's automatic red light. You can't do stuff like that. The weight has to move up. It can pause, but it can't dip down so that you can shift under it to cheat it up. Butts have to stay on the bench. Got to pause it. Elbow sleeves aren't allowed. Things like that. Same thing even on, on a strict press for sports that do have done that. There's no sleeves and stuff allowed. You know, so I would say that, that those lifts aren't valid. They don't count because if you're going to put up a lift as a strength standard of feet of strength, it needs to be comparable to other people what they do. You know, the same thing when you see people who do um, sumo deadlift with straps and with cast iron plates on a whippy bar. That might be 100 pounds over your real max. That same person, if they were to do a stiffer bar or calibrated steel plates like you see me using with no straps, because that strap combination allows a lot on that setup. Right, there can then grip a weight that they would never even be able to lift anyway so that they can get through the leverage advantage. They might put 600 pounds up like that, but you go make them test it on a stiff bar and a conventional, they could do 500 raw. And it really is like that. Uh, and people don't always grasp that. So again, these are people who are faking lifts Baking lifts to make themselves look stronger than they are. That's not cool. And, you know, and if it's going to be some other non-standardized lift that we would be doing for hypertrophy, why, why do we care how much weight you're slinging around? Okay. So example, like you guys see me doing my incline benching and stuff. If you're using an incline bench, you're trying to build all this, guys, right? That is what the incline bench does. It's great. It's a phenomenal exercise. I love incline benching. But how would you be performing that? Pausing it on the chest, full range of motion. You touch the clavicle. Okay, we come over and, and people are throwing on elbow sleeves, touching, going it, or not touching at all. It's like, but the sleeves are taking some of the weight at the point of greatest mechanical tension where you really built that chest. So what in the hell are people even doing? These are big hypertrophy movements. Take them through their full range of motion, control them, do them right. Uh, and it's just, there's so much nonsense, so much nonsense on this platform with this and all of them at this point. And it's just ridiculous, guys. Do some real lifting. That's all I'm asking. Do some real lifting. Quit doing bullshit. Okay, particularly when guys are showing off for the purposes of marketing. Let's see some real training. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.